Auzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In this session, we are going to talk about basic statistical concepts. The first one is reliability and validity. Now, reliability and validity are two important characteristics of any measurement procedure. So, when we are using a questionnaire to measure different concepts or different behaviors or different attitudes, we have to make sure that our measures are reliable and valid. So, reliability actually refers to the confidence that we can place on the measuring instrument to give us the same numeric value, that is, to give us consistent results. That is, when the same measuring instrument is used again on the same subjects, on the similar condition, it will give us similar results. Validity, on the other hand, means that our measuring instrument, it actually measures what it intends to measure, what it is supposed to measure. So, reliability is about consistency. Validity is about accuracy. These are the critical or central terms associated with these two concepts. Reliability of an instrument does not warranty its validity. So anything that is reliable does not mean that it is valid. For example, there may be an instrument which can measure a number of things a child can recall from his last one day activity. If this instrument returns the same value when implemented on the same child, it is a reliable instrument. However, but if someone else claims that it is a valid instrument for measuring the IQ level of the child, he may be wrong. Another example could be, let's say there is a watch, a wall clock in a room. Whenever you enter the room, it shows the same time, 6 o'clock. It's reliable because whenever you enter the room, the time is same, 6 o'clock. But is it valid? No, it's not valid. So, something that is consistent may not be valid. So, an instrument may be consistent. For example, you are using the same job satisfaction instrument to measure job commitment. It's giving reliable results. But is job, com job satisfaction and job commitment the same concepts? Can you use job satisfaction scale to measure job commitment? No, you cannot. This instrument may just be measuring the memory level and not the IQ level of the child. So it's measuring the memory, how much memory or what's the capacity of the child to memorize things, not his intelligent quotient. There are other tests to measure IQ level. So how do you assess reliability? As discussed earlier, reliability is the degree to which one may expect to find the same result if the measurement is repeated with the same subject under similar conditions. One way to ideally measure reliability is by test-retest method. You test it, then you again retest it. It is done by measuring the same object twice and correlating the results. So you measure the same object twice, measure the same or use the same instrument twice on the people and then correlate the results. The higher the correlation, the higher the consistency. If the measurement generates the same answer in repeated attempts, it is reliable. However, establishing reliability through test and retest is practically very difficult. You cannot ask the same subjects to join your survey again. For example, if your survey has 400 respondents, you cannot ask them to fill the same questionnaire again. It's even very hard to do it the first time. So once a subject has been put through some test, it will no longer remain neutral to the test. This is one another point that is uh, worth considering. Once he has been through the test, the next time he may not be neutral to the test and the next time he may have a certain amount of bias. Imagine taking the same GMAT test repeatedly to establish the reliability of the test. Some of the commonly used techniques for assessing reliability include uh, Cohen Kappa coefficient for categorical data and Cronbach alpha for internal reliability of a set of questions that is scale. This is the most normally used reliability measures or techniques to measure reliability.
cron batch alpha is normally used however in modern survey based research we normally use composite reliability to assess the construct reliability so there are other tests uh, obviously composite reliability is part of confirmatory factor analysis so how do you assess validity the objective of assessing validity is to see how accurate is the relationship between the measure and the underlying trait it is trying to measure what do you what do we mean by the measure and the underlying trait the underlying trait is that for example let's say we want to measure job satisfaction so the underlying trait is your job satisfaction whereas the measure is how satisfied are you with the salary that there may be one question on salary there may be another question on environment there may be another question on co-workers there may be another question on job security so the underlying trait is job satisfaction and to measure job satisfaction we have got four indicators as i explained the first step in assessing validity is called the face validity test so what's a face validity face validity establishes whether the measuring device actually looks like it is measuring the correct characteristics for example i want to measure job set a uh, job commitment and i am asking questions like i am satisfied with my job i am satisfied with the salary i am satisfied with the environment i am satisfied with the culture i am satisfied with my co-workers does it look that these five questions are actually measuring job commitment no they look like they are measuring job satisfaction so there is lack of face validity the face validity test is done by showing the instrument to experts and actual subjects and analyzing their responses qualitatively what do they think about your scale does it look like that your scale that you have proposed is actually measuring the concept that you intend it to measure three other important aspects of validity are predictive validity content validity and construct validity predictive validity it means that the measurement should be able to predict other measures of the same thing what it means is that the measurement that you are taking as part of your study should be able to predict other measures of the same thing for example if a student is doing well on gmat examination she should also do well during her mba program so your performance in the gmat examination should predict your mba your job satisfaction should better predict your job commitment content validity it refers to the extent to which a measurement reflects the specified or specific intended domain of the content so when you are using a construct obviously every construct has a domain every construct has a theoretical scope every construct is operationalized in a certain way so what is content validity concerned with your content validity is actually concerned with the intention or intended domain of the construct whether the domain of the content whether the central idea of the content is actually measuring the concept or not for example if a researcher wants to assess english language skills of students and develops a measurement which tests for how well the students can read such a measurement clearly lacks content validity so why does it lacks content validity when you are developing a scale to measure in english language skills and you have you are assessing the reading ability of these students why because english language skill does not only include the reading skills there are writing skills there are listening skills as well so the intended domain of the content is not actually covered how do you cover the intended domain of the content when you cover different aspects reading does not reflect the entire domain of behaviors there are other skills as well to establish content validity researchers should first define the entire domain of the study how do you operationalize the concept 
that's why the first thing that you have to do when you are developing a construct or when you are working on a construct or when you intend to measure a concept the first thing that you need to do is you need to properly define your construct and then assess if the instrument they are using truly represents this domain so you first what what do you need to do you need to first define the construct and then see whether that particular measurement that you are taking actually justifies or covers the whole domain or covers the whole operationalization so what's construct validity in summary your content validity is actually whether the content of the measurement covers the domain of the construct or not it's how you have defined the concept it's how you have defined the construct whether your measures cover that particular definition or all the aspects that you have mentioned in that particular definition so what's construct validity it is one of the most commonly used techniques in social sciences based on theory it looks for expected patterns of relationship among variables now there are two forms of construct validity convergent validity and discriminant validity now in convergent validity we actually assess the interrelationship between items measuring a same the same construct so for example let's say job satisfaction has five items that are being used to measure job satisfaction now when establishing convergent validity we look at the interrelationship of these five items the other form of construct validity is discriminant validity now in discriminant validity we assess the interrelationship between different constructs of the study not just one single construct so construct validity thus tries to establish an agreement between the measuring instrument and theoretical concepts to establish construct validity one must first establish a theoretical relationship and examine the empirical relationship how are these measures interrelated with each other and then you go on and use statistical techniques to establish construct validity for example one form of construct validity is convergent validity the statistical technique that we use to establish convergent validity is average variance extracted for discriminant validity we use fornal and locker criterion or maybe heterotrait monotrait ratio now these are statistical methods that we use to establish construct validity thank you very much